Welcome to the Shika Serbu Motor Channel. This channel provides easy to understand explanations of car mechanisms. Pumping loss and engine brake are the same phenomenon. During acceleration or cruising, it is referred to as pumping loss because it generates energy in a negative direction relative to engine operation. During deceleration, this negative energy slows down the vehicle, which is why it is referred to as engine brake. First, we will learn about the engine operation during cruising. The car is cruising at a constant speed with a small throttle opening and an engine speed of 2,400 revolutions per minute. During the combustion stroke, the air-fuel mixture combusts, creating a rapid pressure increase that pushes the piston downward. This force is converted into rotational motion by the connecting rod and crankshaft, providing the power to move the car forward. During the exhaust stroke, the piston is pushed upward by the inertial force generated as the car moves. When the exhaust valve opens, the combusted gases flow out into the exhaust port because they have high pressure. Therefore, no energy is required for the piston to expel the exhaust gases. During the intake stroke, the piston is moved downward due to the car's inertia. The throttle valve is slightly open, and the air passage is narrow. The engine performs the work of drawing a large amount of air into the cylinder through this narrow passage. At this time, the engine consumes the car's inertia energy. This energy consumption is referred to as pumping loss. Imagine using a manual air pump to remove air from a 500 milliliters plastic bottle. You will need a bit of strength. Let's consider a four-cylinder 2000 cc engine running at 2400 revolutions per minute. The displacement per cylinder is 500 cc. At 2400 revolutions per minute, this engine rotates 40 times per second. Since the intake stroke occurs once every two engine revolutions, each cylinder draws in 500 cc of air, 20 times per second. The time allotted for the cycle is 0.025 seconds. The engine continuously repeats this process, which results in energy loss and acts as a force that reduces the engine speed. During the compression stroke, the car's inertia causes the piston to rise, compressing the air-fuel mixture. To perform the work of compressing the gas, the engine loses energy. As previously mentioned, during the combustion stroke, the expanding combustion gases push the piston downward. At this time, the energy from the expansion of the gas compressed during the compression stroke is added to the combustion energy. In other words, the energy lost during the compression stroke is retained in the compressed gas and released during the power stroke. As a result, pumping losses occur during the intake stroke, and the cause lies in the throttle valve. Diesel engines do not have a throttle valve. Because they do not experience pumping loss caused by a throttle valve, diesel engines have higher thermal efficiency and superior fuel economy compared to gasoline engines. Generally, the thermal efficiency of a gasoline engine is about 30% while that of a diesel engine is around 40%. When the driver releases the accelerator pedal during deceleration, the throttle valve fully closes. Since no fuel is injected and combustion does not occur during the combustion stroke, no driving force is generated. In each stroke, the piston is moved up and down by the car's inertia. Because the throttle valve almost fully shuts the air passage, a larger force is required to pull the piston down during the intake stroke. Since this force takes away the car's inertia, the car slows down. This effect is referred to as engine brake. When strong engine braking is needed, the driver downshifts to increase the engine speed. For example, if the engine speed reaches 3,600 revolutions per minute due to downshifting, the engine must intake the same amount of air in two-thirds of the time, compared to when it is at 2,400 revolutions per minute. In other words, 
since 1.5 times more energy is required than at 2,400 revolutions per minute, greater deceleration can be achieved. Since diesel engines do not have a throttle valve, their engine braking effect is weaker. However, since the intake and exhaust valves narrow the airflow path, engine braking is not entirely absent. When driving on a long downhill slope, a gasoline engine vehicle may generate sufficient engine braking effect with a one-step downshift, whereas a diesel engine vehicle might require two steps downshifts. In downsized turbocharged engines, control is implemented to keep the throttle valve open, even when the accelerator pedal is released, in order to reduce turbo lag. For this reason, the engine braking effect is often weak, similar to that of a diesel engine. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. We'll see you in the next video.